restoration is available. A little bit complicated. Um, I get the impression that Tony is available on the Spanish channel. If you yes. yes. So do I. Perfect. Yeah. So if you want Italian, you need to go on the Spanish channel. Hola, Tony. Yeah, no. Right, Vinny, let's get this underway while we go to the first two questions. I'm going to Hi Jürgen, I hope you're well. <clears throat> Pardon me, <clears throat> losing my voice slightly. Um, I just wanted to check on Harvey Elliott, first of all, Jürgen. Um, have you spoken to him and what kind of spirits is he in? How's he doing? Yes, of course, I spoke to him um, the night after the game um, already and um, he was in a good, in a, in a, in a, I think in the best possible place. For that moment, he took it. He, he, he took it already. He accepted already. He knew he will be out for a while. Um, and um, today he is uh, in London and um, will, as far as I know, probably have the surgery today. So, and that's then obviously the next step on the way back. And um, so we all wait for news from that after the surgery. And um, that's it. Obviously, meeting AC Milan in the group stage, I mean, for us, it brings back memories of <clears throat> two finals, 2005 and 2007. But what sense of a real European occasion do you get? And not just that, but one that you can again share with the fans as well. Yeah, of course, 2-5 is, I have more in my mind than 2-7. <laughs> um, but... Um, yeah, anyway, if you would think about um, any kind of European battles, then I think Liverpool, Milan, AC Milan is a, is, is a must watch. It's one you want to see. Milan had now, well, well it's now not in the Champions League for a, for a few years, but uh, are doing really well since one and a half roundabout years and played a brilliant last season, ended up second um, and um, started this season really good as well, so um, will be for sure a very tough game for both sides. Um, but yeah, I can imagine from um, there are a few nice games, um, obviously in this in this first first uh, on this first match in the Champions League and um, Liverpool AC Milan is for sure one of them. Thank you, Vinny. Okay, we're going to go to James from Source Court. Then uh, I think Carl from the BBC, and that's Paul from the Times. Thank you. Jürgen, just how exciting is this group that you're in with AC Milan, Porto and Atletico Madrid and how difficult is it going to be to, to progress from it? <laughs> yeah, difficult. Um, thank God for, for all four teams. There's no team. I, I don't think when, when we all saw the draw, it was like that one of us said, oh my God, what a great group. <laughs> uh, let's go for it. It's just a tough group. Come on, we don't have to lie. And, and we knew that. And um, Atletico, um, wow. um, Porto, usually champion in Portugal, if not, then second. So a top, top team. AC Milan, big history in the best moment for years. Um, so, yeah, that's proper Champions League. So we worked obviously really hard for being part of that. And that's what we get. Uh, we are part of Champions League. We, there's no game where... Um, people think, oh, they don't think about the result or whatever. They all, it's all about um, getting enough points to get through that group. And um, we don't, you better don't waste time. Um, so we should start with that tomorrow night. We have, it's a long time ago that we had the Champions League game at home. We had now um, the opportunity to, to experience again the atmosphere and feel is able to produce um, in, the, in the Premier League. But we spoke a lot in the past rightly so, about European nights at Enfield, and I can't wait to experience that. Uh, it will be great, and um, um, I'm really looking forward to it. Hi, Jürgen. Hi. Um, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, he's 40 in October. What does that say about him as a player that he's still performing and scoring goals at such a high level? Oh, what a guy. Zlatan, what a player. What a player. Um, I think I saw a few videos of him when he when he got injured um, two months ago or whenever it was, and then I saw him pretty much. Um, I'm not sure if he got a surgery or not, but early enough I saw him on a spinning bike and um, saw him fighting back. And Lions don't get in, don't rest long or whatever. 
and he is always right. And so uh, he is right. He came on now in the last game after a long time and, and scored immediately. He's a man for exceptional moments in a game. We have to maybe, uh, if he's not playing, then probably Oliver, Olivier Giroud is playing or Rebic is playing or whatever. That all slightly different profile, but all really good. Um, so it will be absolutely interesting, but Slatan is of one, uh, for sure one of the best players um, ever in this game. He knows that and he says that everybody, that's, I like that about him. Um, and um, that's the confidence he brings in all the games, that he's, he's still physically that fit. It's absolutely incredible and just shows maybe some careers ended too early because there was still a little bit of fuel in the tank and he squeezes obviously every drop out of his body and wants to stay in the game as long as possible. Um, and rightly so, he is absolutely in a... In a um, capable to play um, in each league in the world still, and that's absolutely exceptional. In order to pull through from Norway, from France, and the Netherlands, what would you say to the players? Hello, Jürgen. Um, I, was, I was just wondering if you'd watched um, Emma Raducanu on Saturday night, what, what you thought, if you had, and, and is there anything as a coach you can relate from her story into what you're trying to do as a team? I watched the game, um, the final, and it was absolutely impressive. It's a long ago that I watched a, a, a full tennis game. It's long ago that I watched a full women's tennis game, and I was really impressed by the by the power, the speed, um, and the whole the whole game. I think women's women's tennis is obviously in a, in a brilliant moment. In the moment, these two girls were 18 and 19, and that, that, that this, what they what they showed was massively impressive. During the game, then we watched um, the interviews as well, or the, or the, the what is it, when they got the trophies, the trophy ceremony, and both girls, how they spoke with 18 and 19, that was inspiring, to be honest, <laughs> maybe even more so than the tennis, and that was already inspiring enough, but um, I was absolutely overwhelmed by the, by, by the way they, they, the, the two girls presented themselves, but still... Fernandez was obviously disappointed losing the game, rightly so. It was really close after the game. Um, Emma showed great respect for her. They knew and hoped that they will face each other in the future very often and um, be in many more finals. Um, I wish for them as well. So it was just a great show of, of sportsmanship, of, of elite sport. How can you, how, how, how humble can you be when you are that young? already on the top of the, the world, even when it's only for a few hours, but they were obviously both, and um, it was really nice. That's what you can take. About the tennis story, I don't know enough, um, but when you're 18 years old and are able to win the US Open, it's clear there's one thing that happened in the last 10, 15 years, and that's hardest work, because otherwise it wouldn't work. So she's for sure a, a, a talent of century, but... Um, Anyhow, uh, without hardest work, it's not possible to be there. And um, doing that, uh, that she did that, and now she's there in that moment, and you see her smiling during a game, it's just the nicest thing I can imagine. I was really, I, I will watch women's tennis for sure much more now again than I did in the last few years. Uh, we go to Pat and uh, Andreas. Uh, How are you again? Thank you for your time. Uh, I just wanted to to ask you a question on, on that uh, historical game against Milan in, in 2005. Uh, what do you remember about that night in Istanbul and, and what impressed you the most at that time? Oh, I don't know, the obvious things, obviously. I, I was, I, I, at that night I was thinking about um, not watching the second <laughs> Uh, because now everybody in the world, apart from um, the few people in the in the Liverpool dressing room, um, thought that might be this game might be decided. And um, yeah, the the fight back was impressive. But um, what I remember is some incredible saves of Dudek. Um, even so, they had to he had to to keep them in the game. They could have scored three goals, but Milan could have scored uh, more goals as well. So that would have probably closed the game. Um, that's what I remember from the football game. But obviously, it was that time neither an AC Milan supporter nor a Liverpool supporter. So it was just watching a, a Champions League final. And after 3 0, and with all the things that were said before the game, Milan probably the, uh, the favourite and stuff like this, 
looked like the game is decided and it became then one of the biggest football sensations ever. And I was really happy that I didn't switch the telly off and watch the whole game. Thank you. Uh, we go to Andreas and to Dominic King. Hello, Jürgen. Uh, Andreas from uh, Swedish television. Hi. Um, you told, uh, talked about uh, Ibrahimovic, uh, <laughs> but what things in this game is it that you are impressed with? Oh, intelligence. So, I, okay, that he has incredible technical abilities. It's clear. So he can obviously control the ball with his feet when it's uh, at eight foot height or whatever. So he did that from time to time. He can score incredible volleys, but it's uh, um, uh, it can, it's good in heading. His his um, athleticism is, is was always outstanding, um, and he uses in all age groups he went through. Now he always used the 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 things which were left in his body in the perfect way. Let me say it like this. I don't think he has the same speed as he had when he was a 18-year-old boy or whatever, but it's not important because um, when you understand the game, you can play the game, um, obviously, in different circumstances, and that's what he's doing. But the things I always... The, these spectacular goals he scored, if it was a... What is it? A bicycle kick from halfway line nearly, or whatever. The, the thing what, what imp impressed me most with him is, is the overview he has in a game. So he really uh, pre-thinks the things will happen. Brings him in the right position. So he can pass the balls. So he can use all situations in the game. And the goal is slightly too far in front of his goal or whatever. These kind of things. The overview he always showed um, that impressed me most. Okay, thanks, guys. I've probably got everyone I can take now. Let's be honest with you. Uh, so we'll go down for one, four goals for one. Yeah, this this is the first time that AC Milan have have, um, have played at Anfield. Um, the sense of history that that, that they bring to the, this competition. Um, growing up, you, you've you've spoken before about um, Arrigo Sacchi and the, the, his team. They, um, well, they they just set the standard in the in the Champions League for a, for a spell. What sort of influence did he have on you? And do you, are you still in contact with him? I wouldn't say I'm still in contact with Ari Basaki. We are in contact from time to time. Um, Mr. Saki has my number and he used that from time to time. Um, and I obviously reply, but I don't want to bother him with um, uh, any kind of actual questions. And I would never do that. Um, but he's a very, not only one of the best managers ever in this, in this game, he's a very nice person on top of that. And he was one of the most influential managers at least for me and for the way I like football, uh, because he organized uh, the pitch in a different way uh, with the formation he, he chose. And uh, my, the most influential manager I had, Wolfgang Frank, was pretty much obsessed with this kind of football. And so that was the way I got, um, I got to know about it. And I uh, tried to to figure out everything what I could get about it when I was a younger, a younger coach, and um, and um, that helped me a lot. So um, the, the way they played in in the time when when they were on their peak with Arrigo, with the Dutch guys, with um, Barisi, with Maldini, with all these guys, that was absolutely impressive. They controlled games. It looked so easy, but it wasn't. But just because they organized the pitch much smarter than all the others. So um, very impressive person. Thanks, Tom. Uh, just before we go to the last two questions, a reminder, Alison Becker is our player of the year, quite prompt after uh, the match. So, hands up for those of you who want to speak to uh, Ali and Mike. Full course, followed by Ali. Hi, Egan. Um, Hi. Just wanted to ask about Mo Salah. I mean, you mentioned Ibrahimovic there and his age and his ability to, to keep playing at that age and his conditioning and so on. I mean, looking across the Champions League this week, we're going to see... Lewandowski, Messi, Ronaldo, all players who were, you know, mid to late thirties. Do you see Mo with that similar kind of mindset to to play well into his thirties with the way he looks after himself and, and his ability just to kind of, you know, just that mindset that he has? Possibly. Never spoke to him about that. How long how long, how long he wants to play, but um, he has all the the things you need to do. That he's even it's more obviously physically more the type of Lionel you know, Messi. Um, similar height, similar weight, probably. So um, all these guys needed to be lucky with um, with injuries, 
that they always could come, they were not without injuries, but they always could come back without any further harm. Um, and that's very important. And when you'd be like that lucky, but Mo has all things. He, I'm pretty sure the way he, he, he sees football, he wants to be part of the game as long as he can somehow. And there's no reason I should be able to do that. It's about attitude. Obviously, you want it um, because I'm pretty sure a couple of players finished their career because they just couldn't be that motivated anymore. It's thought, okay, it's fine. I want this, one that, but I'm not the same as I was a few years ago. And that's why people finish their careers. Um, I can see that with Mo. I'm pretty sure Mo wants to squeeze each day out of his career as well, yeah. Last question to Jürgen and Ali Beck. Hi, Jürgen. I, um, I, I don't mean to, this to sound like disrespectful to other or the teams you might have played in the Champions League group stages before, or suggest you've had easier games. But what does this group, such a you know a historic group and well matched group, do for the competition itself? And how does it do, does it change perhaps the first half of your season? Given there's no leeway, there's no let up in it. Yeah. So look, it's uh, it's always like this. There are moments. Uh, this is the strongest group we had, obviously, since I'm at Liverpool. No doubt about that. I have, think 2013, uh, when I was at Dortmund, we had um, the Champions League group as well. <laughs> um, I think it was City, Real Madrid. And I don't want to be disrespectful. It was was the third team. I got it. Uh, it's too long ago, but um, that was a proper group as well. And everybody said before, oh my God, how you want to get through that and stuff like this. It's all about you have to play the games anyway. What does that for the competition? This group it keeps out two really good football teams from the knockout stages. That is already clear. <laughs> it will deliver one really really strong football team into the European League. That's for sure as well. So um, that's what it delivers for the competition. Apart from that. I know when people, I, I never understand that when people talk about changes in the, in the Champions League and it's just not my thing. I like the Champions League, um, how it is. I always said that. Um, and this group obviously shows that there are no games um, which pe where people think, do we really want to watch that? Um, what can what can could be decided here? This group will be exciting from the first second to the last second. I can't see any kind of early decisions made in this group and um, that keeps us obviously on our toes in between <laughs> in between these games we have a very important competition as well playing Premier League and um, uh, League Cup and hopefully um, then FA Cup later on in the season all these kind of things but it's the, the thing we wanted it's that what that's exactly what we wanted and now we are here and now we 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 play Milan here. We play we play fly, I think then Atletico, then Porto, and then um, unbelievable stadiums stadiums as well. Great crowd, all that kind of stuff. Passionate fan base, all these kind of things. It's exactly like you want how you want football, and that's what we got. And now we have to deal with it. Ajax, uh, and that's it. Ajax, all champions, and us. That's it. Yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you very much, Ali. Back for being here.